All right. Before we move on from function composition, um, let's say a few quick words about inverses. Uh, we'll come back to inverses later on in calculus once we're looking at derivatives of inverse functions and things like that. Um, but now is probably a good time to at least cover the basics, right? So if I have a function f going from, say, a to b, right? So I have some element x here, and x gets sent to some y, right? So y is f of x. The inverse, I want the inverse to go the other way, right? So the inverse should be something which undoes what f did. And so that means that uh, the inverse, which we usually denote with this minus 1 superscript, maybe we should just call it g, it should go the other way. It should go from b to a. Okay, And if I start with f of x, I should get x. Okay, Simple enough. Um, so what that amounts to saying is that if I do f inverse of f of x, I should get x. Um, and similarly, if I did f of f inverse of, well, maybe we should call it something else. Maybe we should call it, uh, what do we call it? Y. Right? Y was f of x. Right? So if I, if I start with this element y here, I apply f inverse, right? That gets me x. Okay? So, so I apply f inverse to y, right? Remember that this is y. So f inverse of y is equal to x, but f of x, well, f of x was y, right? So when you combine a function in its inverse, whichever order you choose to compose them in, notice that you end up where you started. So there's a, there's a name for this. There's something called the identity function. So maybe we call it, say, i, right? i of x equals x, right? Every set comes with an identity function that just associates every element with itself, right? It goes from a set to itself. Um, and so what this amounts to saying is that f composed with f inverse is the identity function. Uh, if you like, this is the identity function on, on b. And f inverse composed with f is identity function on a. Right? Um, so they cancel each other out. So this is where the idea of the inverse comes from. right? They cancel each other out in the same way that a number and its negative cancel each other out if you're doing addition, right? They cancel and leave you with zero. Zero is, is sort of an identity element for addition, right? Because if you add zero, nothing happens. Um, in multiplication, a number, a non-zero number, and its reciprocal are viewed as inverses of each other because if you multiply them, you get one. And if you multiply by one, nothing happens, right? Um, a function in its inverse, right? Um, these are you know, again, you use this word inverse. This time it's with respect to composition because if you compose them, you get the identity function. And if you apply the identity function, nothing happens. Okay? So that's where, that's where this notion of inverse comes from. That's where the word comes from. Um, but the, the caution here is that if you want this thing to be a function, Orange is done. <laughs>
your function f must be what's called 1, 2, 1. Okay? Um, so there's this, this property of being 1 to 1. Um, and, and usually the way you characterize this is you say, well, if f of x1 equals f of x2 uh, for some for some numbers x1 and x2 in the domain well the only way that can happen is if x1 and x2 are really the, the same thing. Another way to, of putting this is that if x1 isn't equal to x2, then f of x1 can't equal f of x2. Right? Um, so this is saying that you can't get the same output for two different inputs. Right? For a regular function, that's allowed. You know, for Functions are allowed to have this happen. Right? You can have more than one input give you the same output. But if you want to reverse things, or right, if you want to undo, if there were two different elements of the domain that get sent to the same thing, and you're sitting there and you're staring at this y in b, and you want to get back to x, right? Well, if this y came from two different x values, how are you going to choose which one it should be, right? You don't actually have a function, right? It's not a function if this, if this input for the inverse could be associated to more than one output. Right. Um, so there's this issue of being one to one that you have to check. Um, we can uh, we can do one example with this to show you how you check for a function of being one to one. How do you find the inverse? Um, and then we're going to move on to uh, to other types of functions.